We are here at a very desolate location, uh, braving the extreme heat of the African desert. Um, this is a paleontological expedition sponsored by the University of the Witwatersrand at Johannesburg. Uh, there are four people. I joined an international team of geologists and paleontologists from, well, uh, four of them from South Africa, uh, two from France, and then one each from Zimbabwe, uh, Australia, United Kingdom, and me representing the United States. And I realize how inappropriate that is, but frankly, in you know, of late, we've noticed that the bar for who gets to represent the United States has really plummeted to a, a little time low. So one of the things I, I have here, uh, Mike Day, who is the curator for non-mammalian tetrapods, tetrapods <laughs> <laughs> from the Natural History Museum in London, uh, probably my favorite building in the whole world. Uh, and I envy you that job. Now, one of the things that I noticed is that the things that you guys were finding in the field, I didn't find squat, but the things that you guys were finding in the field required a really well-trained eye to pick it up. So there's a lot of people that don't understand what fossils are or how we overlook them because they've got a very different idea. Like the things that we were looking at the lab, in the lab have all been removed from the matrix and have mm -hmm. pristine detail, but it's not always that way. In fact, that's extremely rare. So can you show me with this one? When we got, when we got to this place, all these paleontologists get out, and they look in this uh, this planter with these rocks, and right away one of them says, "Guys, these are not rocks." <laughs> so, and this house was owned by a uh, by a fossil hunter, so this should have been obvious that this would happen. He took the the pieces that were not important to a museum, and put them all in here. So, can you explain what what this one is? Sure. So this piece is actually the elbow of a large um, herbivorous dinocephalian therapsid. So it, it, it's quite hard to see it, but this is one of the uh, bones of the forelimb. Mm -hmm. So this is probably a radius. It's actually easier to see from this angle. This is where it, this is what would really give it away, is the cross section through the bones here. So in the forearms and in the foreleg. Uh, of these animals. They have two bones just like we do. Um, in this, in the forearm you have the radius and the ulna. So the ulna, ooh, if we move it around here, so they're quite large in these animals and it has the olecranon process over here to which the mass muscles uh, would attach, uh, they would extend the elbow like that. And we also have a bit of the distal humerus. So the humerus is the bone of the upper arm. Uh, but that's quite badly broken, so it's quite difficult to see. But what would give it away, uh, are the sort of the shapes, so these sort of circular shapes. Um, if you go in close, you can see you have this cancellous bone in the middle of the bone, and then it gets denser towards the exterior. So you start to see a honeycomb structure, and then very, there's very sort of small pitting in the uh, cortical bone around the edge. So generally you, you rely a lot on your intuition. So the amateur fossil hunter tends to go out and find loads and loads of things that look like fossils. So That's what I found. Loads and loads of things that yeah. looked like <laughs> fossils. <laughs> so the, the sort of process of trading is, is about teaching yourself what uh, the things that aren't fossils, but relying on those same intuitions. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much for that. So it, I would have just, I just walked past everything that was real and picked up all these things that were not. <laughs> so I showed people everything that I'd found. Nope, you still haven't found anything. And then they show, look what I have, and I don't get it. So that's why I thought this would be important. Thank sure. you very much. My pleasure.